Today FM's Fergal Darcy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to have Dan Smith from Bastille. Dan, how are you, sir? I'm good, thanks, mate. How are you doing? I'm in great form. We're just on the cusp of surviving. Brand new track, it is out there. Showcases a new kind of groove-led sound from Bastille. Now, this is on the back of What You're Gonna Do, which is an absolutely fabulous track as well. The funny thing about surviving, though, as a track is this wasn't actually written COVID time. This was written back earlier on in the year. Yes, I wrote with some, some friends last year, pretty much finished before lockdown started. Yeah, and I guess I felt a bit weird about how on the nose and relevant it sounded. I didn't want to be one of those bands or musicians that like jumped on what was a massively complicated situation for so many people. So it felt a bit strange about releasing it, but I guess it's it feels kind of as relevant now as it did when I wrote it. I just love the song. It feels really different from us, kind of chilled and weirdly optimistic, given like what it's about. It's got an obnoxiously loud saxophone at one point. So who doesn't need that in their life, right? Yeah, this is Ratipo who's on tour with you. Yeah, yeah he's amazing. He's He's been a friend for years and, and he's toured with us for since our second album but we've done like a bunch of orchestrated shows in the last couple of years with various orchestras and choirs of like different sizes and he's been a massive part of that we got him down the studio and, and we wanted the song to feel a bit kind of walk on the wild side and have a sort of like head nodding much more chilled feeling to it and he did a lot of stuff on our last album and he's one of those people who I know predominantly as a friend but then every now and then you, you sort of see them do something and you're like oh my god you're like a bit of a genius aren't you how, how are you so like nice and normal and funny and then you're also a bit of a genius that's unfair we, he came down he came down the studio with like six different sized saxophones and a suitcase of flutes as you do oh you know somebody uh, means business when they arrive in like that you know what I mean <laughs> that, that's it like you know you've come in there you've brought the arsenal let's go <laughs> yeah he just like let rip on the track and it's, it's wicked we have this brilliant way of telling people when we're on our darkest day yeah, I'm fine. I'm I'm fi- I'm fine. You know, yeah. you know the dogs after running away. My missus is after. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, the world is about to. I'm fine. You know, and that's what this yeah. song is all about. Yeah, it is. It is. I think. Yeah, I wanted to sort of like it tongue in cheek confront that that thing that's so innately set in us all to be like. Yeah, I'm fine. And to be fair, conversations would be very long and small talk would not be small if if every time someone asked you how you were, you dove straight into the depths of of your biggest perpetual worries. I think this year in particular, it, it seems like easier now than ever to sort of be a bit more honest because everyone, I think, is sympathetic to the stuff that other people are going through. Oh, absolutely. Um, but, but it's a stranger for you. I mean, in fairness, earlier on in the year, going to see Big T for one of your friends and he turns around and he says, this is the gig of the year. And you're going, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of debating and then it turns out well it was the only gig <laughs> you know so it's one, it's one of those situations you're working on a track with Graham Cox and brilliant track what you're going to do you you wrote this beforehand but like this was when you're on tour in the US and you had to finish it in different places yeah yeah I weird mean, it's, it's something about this because obviously the song it, it's meant to sound like and it's like our song too it's this like like grungy like punky old like two minute slap of a rock song and 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 the idea that it was finished kind of remotely and digitally feels so at odds with like with the era that it's from but but yeah I mean I, I guess it's one of those things I don't know if it ever would have come together if it wasn't for lockdown you know there are some things that you've got to be grateful for in that respect I, I guess this year we just wanted to put songs out sort of out the blue that sound really different and just surprise people and hopefully distract people and show everyone the different sides to what we do and this and, and, and the different things we want to do as well for me getting to work with Graham Cox and like come on he's such a legend and, and growing up he was like in, in one of my favourite bands ever so uh, that was that was pretty exciting it hits so hard it leaves an imprint of a hand on your face that's it's one of those <laughs> surpri- that, that, that's it's one of those songs now this is on the back of uh, Doom Days last summer so you guys are kind of going to have a bit of a quiet year anyway because you just released Doom Days really inventive boundary breaking album you're an observer uh, a keen observer of the world and what goes on you know this has a lot of things in there but one thing about Bastille's music for anyone's out there that has checked it out will know this it's all about escapism and I like that you know because there's so much things going on out there and that's very evident from that album I guess we set out with Doom Days to make an album that was completely about escapism so when we started I wanted to make a kind of 90s rave album and and completely forget all the weird and scary stuff that's happening in the world yeah the addiction the fake news all that jazz in making the album and those things 
you know, still percolating around and becoming worse and worse, I guess they seeped in and it kind of became an album about a sort of slightly tragic album about trying to escape that stuff and trying to escape, you know, the, 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 the trappings of like a breakup and, and, and all the things in your daily life you want to avoid, but they, they just come sort of leaking back in with the morning. And so I, I guess with us, it's always, it's always been about, about this attempt to escape, but, um, but maybe it's a little bit of a futile, a futile endeavor I don't know it's, it's like you're on the climb to the apex mountain back when we were doing Wild World you had the boiler suits and the face masks and it's like we're yeah. going and then we've doomed days and now we've got surviving now <laughs> where are we going when are we going to get to the when are we going to get to the peak here uh, it's but yeah, it, no yeah. I, 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 I've to give it man <laughs> no but I've enjoyed it it's all been good surviving's a fabulous track it's out there I'm going to play it off in the next few minutes but I want to talk about some of the things you've been doing because you have been doing some stuff for charity some great stuff but Distraction Tactics has been a big one for me uh, George Mackay true history of the Kelly gang this is like you are a film buff like myself and uh, you, you've managed to do something beautiful to kind of keep people occupied in a time where they need something to keep them occupied that's quite interesting with, with a musician that they love it's, um, it's very much still ongoing yeah yeah we've got like a Halloween special planned it was for me as a as a film lover like it was just a really fun excuse to sort of speak to some amazing filmmakers when I knew that they were as as locked down and terrified as, as the rest of us. And, uh, you know, the idea was to sort of build together a club of people, film fans from all over the world, and just, just be able to chat about movies and, you know, get their opinions. And it sort of gave a structure to my week uh, in a time where there was very little structure. Getting to speak to, you know, Sylvain Chomet, who's this amazing, like, animator, writer, director from France, and, and you know, Taika Waititi in New Zealand, and, you know, Simon Pegg from Shaun of the Dead here. And, and we sort of... The idea I mean, that was the ultimate. That was the kickoff from the Cornetto trilogy. That was the, that was the first one with Sean the Dead with Simon Pegg. That's brilliant. I mean, if you're going to start to kick in with that, like, well, I guess we it was it was like week two of lockdown, and we started this film club. And I guess I wanted to start punchy with a with an apocalyptic zombie film. You know, what else would you choose? Just, I mean, it's the perfect to, choice. <laughs> just, 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 just to distract and cheer everyone up from the uh, from the real apocalypse outside. I'm dying for the David Lynch one now, where you get to talk about Fire Walk With Me and what actually was going on in that film. <laughs> that, that's, I, I cannot yeah. wait to see you tackle David Lynch. After listening to Laura Palmer and Overjoyed, I was like, definitely, this man is a Twin Peaks fan, and he will nail down what in the name of God David Lynch was at when he brought back <laughs> Twin Peaks to return, because I didn't get any of that. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, I, I, met, I met him once. We did a remix of one of his songs, and uh, and he liked it, and asked me asked me to come around his house for coffee. So that was pretty surreal for me because he's you know when I was growing up, he was like my ultimate idol, I guess. Oh wow! I mean, imagine getting there and discussing the diary of Laura Palmer and going, wow, with the Black Lodge and Bob and God, you know. Like, yeah. I, mean, I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to uh, like resist every urge to be like, dude, can you just explain everything to me? Because uh, what's going on? Uh, but yeah, that was that was pretty surreal. A lot of people don't know this, but the first time that Bastille were actually played on a radio station was Kerrang Radio with Flaws. Kerrang is not probably the place to, <laughs> that, that many people would have expected us to start out. But yeah, there's some, this like brilliant DJ Alex Baker there who like. To su- just supports new music of all of all kind of. He's absolutely fabulous, and the origins of the band. This is one of the funniest ones. When you come back from uni, your mum found a flyer for drum lessons. The guy giving the drum lessons happened to be a wonderful gentleman known as Chris Woods, and that was it. Yeah. Then we got Bastille. It's beautiful. No, <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's just probably not the coolest origin story ever. I should. We should have. We should. We definitely should have. Uh, fake news up a better one than that. Oh, I don't know. I think I, I actually really admire that because it's where you've taken it since and it has been an amazing journey and I hope to see more from you. You are one of the greater creative people out there. Keep up the great work, Dan, and I'm going to play Survivor now here on Today FM. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, mate, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for your time too, man. Virgil Darcy. Weekdays from 2 on Today FM.